Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel Angie B Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me. Today I've decided it's about time I did a video that's a comparative video to one that I did quite a while ago. Um, a while ago I did about using brushos on the gel press and I've since acquired some of the Pretty Gets Gritty Explosion powders but I've not used them on the gel press. So I thought I'd see what happened. Um, I haven't used them on the gel press at all. I haven't even done it away from videoing. So I thought, why not give it a go on here? So these explosion powders are the different from the brushos because they have mica in them. So they've got a shine to them. But the color that you see here, this is the color of the mica, not the color of the actual explosion powder. So you can see this one's got a red mica, this one's got a whitey silver mica, and the others have all got gold micas, but that's not the color that's gonna come out. So don't feel that this is for identical ones because it isn't. Each one has got different colors in it. So what do we do? Well, I think to start off with, we just put some water onto the gel press. Do, 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 do. And bear in mind, water is going to bead up on the gel press because it's repelled. And then I'm just going to sprinkle some of the the colours and see what happens. Now I may well add some more water. So that first one was Athena. This one is Eros. Oh, you can see that lovely red coming through. So this is the Athena, and look, it's gold there, but it's coming through with this beautiful red. The Eros is coming through with more of an orange. Let's see what Atlas does. I know what Atlas does because it's my favourite one. Look, can you see that one? Let me lift it up to you. This is probably going to go horribly wrong. But it goes green. Look at that beautiful colour there. Gorgeous. So we've made some of these run a bit, but never mind because we're going to add more water anyway. There's a bit of Atlas. So I'm just. I'm just going to use the four goldy ones just to show you how different each of them is. I've got a little bit of water there that hasn't got anything in it, so we'll put some more in it. Let's do a little bit more of a squirt. You can really see those colours coming out now. Oh, look at this bit here. You've got all of the colours there. That looks fabulous. And then I'm just going to take a pull off it. And you can see all this because I've squirted more water. You're starting to get striations of the colour. So the way that these work is similar to the brushos in that the individual component colours are in a powder form. Oh, look at that. Look at the sheen of that. Right, I'm going to dry that off and let you see it. So I will dry that off before the end and show it to you. Um, but what happens is you then... As you put the powder, as you put water in the powder, the individual component colours separate out. So you get one powder can give you several different colours. But if you then mix the powder together with water, you get a little bit of a paint. So you just get one colour then, which is the composition of all the different component colours. But you get the addition of a shimmer because of the mica that's in these, which is rather good. Right, so that's pull number two. You can really start seeing that mica coming through there. We've not got as much liquid. Okay, so I'm gonna mop this off, she says, and wonders where she's put a raggy. There it is. I knew I had one. I've always got a raggy to hand. It just sometimes hides. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, and again, I don't know how this is gonna work, but we can try it. You can see there's still quite a lot of mica on there, which is fine. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to add a couple of the, well, the other two colours. And I'm just going to add them like this. And a little bit of that, and a little bit of that. And this time I'm going to add some white acrylic paint. So this is just Pebio white acrylic paint. It's titanium white, I believe. Yeah, titanium white opaque paint. So instead of adding water to get the colours, I'm adding the paint. Okay, now I've just cleaned my brayer. So it's decided. There we go. Just needs a little bit of encouragement. There we are. 
and we're starting to get more colour and I just need oops, a spare piece of paper over here as a roll off piece. I'm running out of space because I've got a pile of stamps here that I'm hoping to add on to one of these as well. That's why it all feels a bit chaotic. And this is one of the things that I absolutely love and I love this with the brushes as well. You get this lovely mottled feel from the paint and the the powders mixing together. That brayer is not playing. I find one of my other brayers. That's the one I like. This one, no matter what, does what I want it to do. It's a very kind brayer. A little bit squeaky, but very kind. Right. Pop the lid back on and I'm going to do this onto a tag type piece. It's sort of a wonky cut piece of card. You can see it's got some little marks on it as well. This um, is cut using a die from the Grunge range by Studio Light. Um, I got the set. This is another piece that comes out of that as well, which is just so cool with the ripped. Looks like it's ripped a page out of a notebook. I love them. So I did have quite a few of these, but I've used a lot of them now. I'll need to do another cut. So let's see how this is going to go. Oh, you know what? I love how that's ended up. And it's not so much, actually. Oh, you can see there is still some shimmer on there. It's not too much, so much the um, explosion powders. It's the fact that some of the white paint that was left from a previous project almost looks a bit like peeled paint on it which is rather cool. Right, I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to use black this time and just see what we end up with. And then what I'm going to do after I've done this is dry off those first couple. Oh, that's lush. <gasps> Isn't that fab? Look, you can see some of the shimmer there that wasn't on top of any of the white, so it's just shimmering onto the black. Oh, you know what we can do? I'm going to pull this bit here because this is fresh paint, but hopefully this is going to have then cleaned off the centre bit of my plate. If you've seen me doing gel plate videos before, you'll know I don't do plate cleaning. So this is why I end up with all sorts stuck on them. Oh, I'm loving the shimmer that we're getting from this, right? This hasn't got any paint on it. I'm just seeing if the shimmer will transfer. Oh, it has, look. So you can get the shimmer to transfer onto your paper, just like that. And you get some of the colour there as well, you can see some of the green coming through there. Oh, I do like them. I'm not really a shimmer girl, but there's something about these explosion powders. Right, what I'm going to do is dry off these two pieces. So these are the first two pieces that we did, they've now been dried off. You can see here we've got the distinct four different colours. So we've got the pinky red, the orange, the yellow, and this lovely turquoise blue. But each of them has got gold mica in it, so we get that lovely gold shimmer across. But the additional benefit is we also get this gold shimmered edge, where it rolled off to the edge, so where it was starting to pool at the edge. We get this lovely frame. So you could do that all the way around. You could just make sure that you roll enough to the edge to get it all the way around. The second pull, here we have some areas that don't have any colour on them, but the mica, if we do a direct comparison, the mica seems much more intense on the second one. I'm holding it under the lamp so you can get a really good image. I think the reason for that is potentially because the mica is heavier so it sinks to the bottom of the water, or it sits on the mat with the water on top. So when you do the second pull you get more contact with the mica, but you can see it doesn't come off. I've covered in it because I've had the powders in my hand, but it's not actually coming off as I rub. I do really like these. So what I thought I would do, oh yeah, the other thing that I want to show you was just pop this on a black background and see what happens. It just makes it pop. How cool does that look just with a black frame? So that just is a really good way of setting off your work. This one's got the frame around it as well in the, the mica, so you could again extend that. You could chop this off a little bit so it's just this piece you can see. If you turn it round you get a completely different image. That almost looks like a dragon coming up here, doesn't it? That's what I see anyway. It's a bit like looking at clouds and seeing what you can find. And this looks like an octopus or something down here. Hmm, interesting. It almost looks like a Bart Simpson octopus. 
like the factory boss man in Bart Simpson or Bart on a bad day <laughs> right that's the other one on the black background again I like that one that way I think that looks really really cool it's like an explosion out of a volcano loving it on these ones we've got more mica on here because this was a bit that didn't have any paint on it if you remember we just went straight in onto the gel plate where the mica was so it's picked up the mica there on this one it isn't as shimmery there is still a hint of a shimmer I don't know if that shows up on camera or not there's a hint of a shimmer but it isn't anywhere near as obvious as this and the reason for that is we mixed it with white paint so we've almost put a layer over it so it's going to reduce that sheen down so don't be surprised if you mix it with paint that the sheen goes from the mica because you're coating it you're stopping it from doing its job right what I'm going to do now is get this and put a couple of the powders straight onto here again so this is the dragon and this is Juno I love the red mica in Juno love it do, do, do. And let's do a spray straight on top of them so you can see you're activating some of what was already there so some greens coming out but there's greens in the dragon as well the dragon's a beautiful color I'm going to use the same piece of black card we've just been playing with and I'm just going to pop it on top and let's see what we get <coughs> I'm giving it time to soak and transfer across because I want to get the best possible transfer of colour. If you just put it straight on and lift it straight off, there's not been enough chance for the water to absorb in and therefore the colour isn't going to come into contact with the page. Let's see what we get with this. So on here, you can see it's almost like fireworks. You can see along here, it's fizzing a little bit. What I'm going to do is dry that off and then come back to you and show you what that's like dried. So on here you can see now we've got all the shimmer but we've not got any of the colour because we put it onto black so the colours, the, the individual colours that you would have if we look at this haven't shown up. The only thing that shows up onto the black is actually the mica powder so if you want that sort of an effect it's great but you're not getting the colors so that's something to bear in mind what I thought might be good to do is a powder off so I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a clean just to get the powder off it and I'm showing you how I'm doing this so that you can see it's purely to try and get the mica off because I don't want it to influence the results. I'm not cleaning my plate properly at all. It, I'm not worried about the paint on it. I'm purely looking at getting that mica off so that we're not getting any of the mica transferring when I add the brush -os. So by a powder off, I mean a direct comparison between brush -os and explosion powder. So I've picked up a couple of brush -os. If you've not seen brush -os before, obviously these come in little bottles with a hole in the top, so they're easy to do. Brush -os come in little pots with no hole. But what you can do with a brush -o is do what I've done and just get a pin and pop a hole in the top. And that's all I've done. That hole wasn't there, I stuck the pin in and then there was a hole. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to grab some paper let's get a couple of sheets of A4 I'm going to go with white because then we can see the colours and I am going to put some water down I'm just trying to decide which way around to do it I might do both right so on the left I am going to do the brush out so there's the lemon brush out and this is the brilliant red brush out so you can start to see they're separating out into their individual colours and on this side I am going to do Olympia and Athena so that's the orangey colour 
an Olympia. I can't remember whether it's the red or the yellow. We will find out. The yellow. Right, so I'm going to add a little bit more water on both sides. So we're starting to get the colours separating out. So the similar, we've got red and yellow on both sides, or thereabouts. Direct comparison. Water, paper, see what we get. So there you go, there's the two different ones. So now we've got on the right is the brushos because I've flipped it, and on the left you've got the explosion powders. So both are vibrant. This obviously hasn't got the mica in it. What seems to happen is the mica is weightier, so it's kind of staying still more, so you get in a more focused area. Whereas this, you get a more, more disbursement of the colour. So you're tending to get more striations here. So that's an interesting point, isn't it? Depends what look you're going for. Both are brilliant. I love both and I use both. But it's interesting how they react differently. Just discovered my next piece of paper's got a chunk missing, so we can't use it. So there's another piece. And I'm just doing this as my second pull, and we'll see what we end up with. I've not added any more water, I've not added any paint. This is just to do as we did at the beginning. So again, you get that lovely, both sides have reacted in the same way with the where the paint has been lifted already. This is the side that's got the mica in it. So this is your explosion powder side, and this is your brush oil side. So it really does depend what you're looking for. The shimmer you can see there is just because it's still wet, it isn't mica. Um, yeah, they, they react differently. I will dry those off and show them to you at the end of the video. So this time I'm going to use the same colours. I'm going to do exactly the same. Pop these, the brushos on one side. That one's slightly bunged up. Oh, there we go. And the hole is much smaller on these than it is on <clears throat> the explosion powders. A little bit of Athena and a little bit of Olympia. I think they were the two colours. And then a little bit of white paint. So if you remember last time we ended up with a bit of a mottled effect. So I'm going to put a blob there and a blob there and get my little brayer. So this is the brush -o side. So this is just paint. So you can see it's just colouring that paint in beautifully. I'm not over mixing it because I don't want to make it a unified colour. And then I'm going to brayer off onto my spare paper here. Just get as much as I can off before I then move on to the other one. I've got a little bit there that I just want to remove with the cloth because I don't want to influence the other side. There we go. Right, so this is the brush, the uh, explosion powders now. So these have got that beautiful mica in them. But are we going to completely neutralise the mica? Let's have a look. Okay, so they've had roughly the same. So you can see the amount of colour there's more colour in the brushos. So if you want intense colour, then your brushos may be the way to go. If you want colour with shimmer, then I'm thinking explosion powders. I do love them both and I use both quite frequently. I had the brushos for ages before I got into using them and now I absolutely love the effects you can get from them. I have got another video up which goes into brushos in more depth and the different things you can do with them. And I know there's quite a few videos up in relation to using the explosion powders. If you go on JMC Designs, Julia from JMC Designs has put, um, put some brilliant videos up about the lots of different things she's done with the explosion powders. Right, so here we have the brushos. So again, you've got more intensity of colour there. And this is the explosion powders. 
there's a hint of mica again but it's not as obvious I'm going to do one more pull on that just to see what we end up with and then I'll dry off the ones that need it and show you the finished results <clears throat> right so this is brushos this is the explosion pad as you can see more mica has come off on that pull so it's, there was more on the base but this is without the mica so again it, it, it really does depend what you're looking for if you want more intensity of colour and you don't want the shimmer then go with the brushos if you want the shimmer you do get intensity of colour we go back to this that's just the colour there is still more intensity over here with the brushos but you get that beautiful shimmer so I'll dry these off and then come back and do a summary so in summary the comparison between the explosion powders and the brushos this is pull number one with explosion powders on this side and brushos on this side and this is using just water and the powders on the gel press so the explosion powders haven't got the same intensity of colour but they do have the amazing mica in them so they do have a really big positive having that mica and the mica isn't just at these centrepieces if you look here you can see there is mica right the way through I'm trying to get that to show up on camera there you go so you get the mica all the way through it's not just in the blobs where you actually start off the brushos are wonderfully intense in colour and that's one of the advantages of them so it depends what you're looking for using them both together I think that looks really cool using both so the second pull in the same order we have more intensity of the um, mica on here which is kind of what you'd expect from what we saw earlier in the video and with the brushos the brushos tend to absorb more on the first pull that could be that there wasn't enough the, the same amount of water or whatever I'm not sure but you can see it's you get the same mottled effect with both but again that vibrancy is there more with the brushos so then when you mix them with acrylic this was the first pull with the acrylic again the vibrancy of the brushos is greater but you do get that really subtle and I don't know if I can show it on camera or not there's a really subtle shimmer of mica I'm not sure if you're going to be able to get that but there really is it's it's subtle but it is there and then the second pull using the paint again you get you actually get a more intense you can see much more intensity to the mica there so I think the mica must just stick to the plate more but I really like this this piece here is going to get chopped up and used as a background almost immediately because I think that piece there is beautiful I don't know what it is about it but I really like it so yeah in summary they do similar but different if you want intense colour and you're not bothered about the shimmer go for your brushos if you want not quite as intense colour but the shimmer is important to you then go for your explosion powders I hope you found that useful I hope it's informed your decision making a little bit I know there are quite a lot of other powders out there these are just the ones I happen to have the brushos I got first and then more recently I got the explosion powders but I do use both and both have a place in my creation um, if you have any questions please just leave them in the comment box and I will endeavour to reply to them and I hope you found that beneficial thank you very much for your time watching my video bye for now